Good evening everybody. Welcome to the studio this evening. And I hope everybody is well. So, I've got a bit of a tidier desk today. I've been putting away supplies, which makes a change. I'm just generally tidying up a little bit, but um, that will just make it a bit easier to tidy up tonight uh, when all these wood chips, hopefully, all these wood chips are all over the desk. And I've got everything out by the chisels. I knew I'd forget something, but anyway. Right, so what we were working on last night was um, the hips of the cat ran back. Fluffy Twiglet, good evening, welcome. And how are you today? So, I'll let the chips fly. <laughs> Uh, switchblades. How are you feeling today? Hopefully you're feeling better than you were yesterday. So smooth, well, lowering the back a little bit more in line with the hips, which is kind of what I expected. Kind of what it looks like on the actual cat. I can use the other blade for this. Ow. My thumb's aching a little bit. <laughs> just laughing there because of course the chips were all just hitting the camera. So I'm throwing them at you. Uh... Oh, I'm not too... Uh... Too bad, thank you. I uh, spent the day throwing out stuff. So basically it's starting to empty a garage of stuff that's been lying around for a good long while. And uh, making good progress with that, but uh, it's sort of it's sl it's good progress but it's slow progress but it's one of those tidying jobs and I know it's um, from experience that it, it doesn't it kind of almost doesn't look like you've done anything for an awfully long time and then all of a sudden it all disappears and uh, you know, I won't say in 10 minutes but you, know, you spend 30 hours tidying something up and it doesn't look any better until uh, you know you get 10 minutes from the end and then uh, in that last 10 minutes everything vanishes and it suddenly looks completely different uh, and I know it's going to be a bit like that I think that hips probably a bit too high compared especially with that one so let's take that down to oh about there. Busy is good evening, welcome. Twenty eighth. Oh, but only about another ten days in twelve days. Twenty eighth. Isn't that that Friday? Wednesday the sixteen what we today, sixteen. Uh twelve days. 
Seven plus ten. I cannot add up. Seven days is twenty-one. No, it's a when. Is it a when? Oh well, it sounds like the middle of the week anyway. But I. Uh, I never. Well, it's not been mentioned, but are you. Are you going to a local college, or are you going um, somewhere? Um, yeah, distant, shall we say? I can't remember whether you've, you've mentioned it or not. So, how are you, Rezius? I'm cutting this down I'm going to have to get the, um, the chisels out again which is the one thing I didn't get out but it's not particularly a problem I actually managed to get everything ready for the stream this time Only, obviously, I didn't if I didn't get the chisels out, which I now need. Okay, that looks... Just basically making both hips about the same height, or both knees about the same height. Um, This one on this side was considerably higher, so didn't look quite right. Let's get the chisels out. One advantage of um, clearing things out is I did come across today some glass roundels, round, basically round glass blanks ish, sort of. I can't remember what they were for. Um, but um, uh, I've now got I think it's three or four sort of mm, what must they be about 8 inch diameter glass blanks uh, which I can uh, do some engraving on which could be uh, could be an interesting thing um, I'm debating I'm debating whether or not it's a good idea to um, to do the engraving on stream or not or whether I can actually do it on stream uh, where I am here because of uh, uh, as I say glass uh, glass powder which gets thrown off uh, when you're engraving it's not the sort of thing you want to, to be breathing in obviously and uh, if I wear my usual mask you won't uh, you won't be able to hear me I look really silly but um, you know I'd be safe um, so I either end up doing sort of a, a silent stream uh, or uh, I have to sort of stream from behind me with the with the um, extractor fan going which I'm not sure I can actually physically do and I certainly won't be able to read chat unless I can find a... Well, I suppose I may be able to get... no, the tablet doesn't work I can stream, I can watch a stream on the tablet but I can't actually connect to chat and I don't need to connect do I? Oh yes I do, I need to receive... Uh, I'll have a think about it uh, SVMS 500, hello welcome to the studio this evening and Kaliati, welcome Hello. Nice to see you again. How is it? Well, I was going to say, how is everybody today? <laughs> yeah. 
This chisel could do with a little bit of a uh, a little bit of work on the strop. I did not mean to do that. Never mind. Either this chisel is slightly blunt, or this wood is um, a little spongy. I'm not quite sure which it is. I guess the way to find out will be to strop it and then find out. So I shall do that. You need to go finish up some scrub. Oh, okay. Well, you see, that's the advantage of being old. No school work. I suppose I could go to university again, but not. It doesn't interest me much these days. Apart from that, I am not doing too bad. Thank you very much, Kaliati. So again just drop this restore the sharp edge and then what I need to do is do more or less the same on the other side this is a small one so this is just a, a wood profile on the bottom here but it's just in it's not really to do anything other than just remove any burrs so it's a wood profile that fits the inside and it literally just any burrs that have been generated it just straightens them out now we'll see whether the wood is spongy or Oh, the uh, chisel was blunt. <laughs> Guess what? The chisel was blunt. Exactly my thought, uh, Fluffy Twiglet. Uh, fluffy, Fluffy. Did I say Fluffy or Fluffy? I don't know. Fluffy Twiglet. Lavini, some. I'm not sure. I understand the um, the sentence. No, I, I I am sure. I don't understand the sentence. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's probably about it, I think, uh, Fluffy Twiddler. Hey, it means I must be good enough, though, at least to watch, at least uh, uh, among, sorry, uh, must be good enough to at least be watched alongside another stream. After all, you only do that when when uh, 
when there's two streams that you um oh no okay i only do that when there's two streams that i can't choose which one i want to watch so i watch both of them at the same time Let's expose that tail a little bit more. Yeah, I can do. Um, Exilian, good evening, welcome. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do a, 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 it will be quick because I can spend half an hour doing this. So, Carving, you've just been watching the pussy cat. Uh, that's a relief calf done on ash. So, uh, quite a hard wood to carve, hand carve, just because it's a very sort of tough wood, strong. And then we've got a dragon. Let's tip the camera up a little bit, make this easier. That's a dragon called Ruth. And conveniently it stands up. Given that there's a mountain there, it's not surprising. Must be heavy at the bottom. Um, a few pyrography pieces. Uh, a couple of uh, a couple of trees because I've lost the other one. I'll have to go looking for it, but I did have three. So just a couple done using pyrography and a couple of pussy cats junior on the left and Felix on the right a door hanger with a uh, sleeping fox on one side and one that's wide awake on the other. Uh, this one needs to come back even further with the camera, but there you've got an elephant. So, salute to sunset is what the piece is called. Obviously you've got the giraffe in the background. It's meant to be the African savanna at sunset, and there the elephant is waving bye-bye to the sun. <laughs> Somewhat romantic, I guess, but you know, it, it looks good. And then I've got something a little bit more technological. Uh, that's a monorail, which is a Walt Disney World monorail from about 15 years ago. So, given that you've just seen the train or a train. If we switch switch crafts, 
Well, actually, that's pretty, uh, talking we've talked about trains, um, trains, planes, and automobiles. That's a practice piece that I'm in the middle of, and I've not finished yet. So that's a train. You'll see this again in a moment. Um, another practice piece that I did a, uh, right at the start when I first started streaming. That's uh, obviously it says World War Two bomber Lavrov Lancaster. I mentioned trains and I said you'd see one of them again. There it is. Tattoo Panda 2007, thank you very much for following. So, so this is, uh, oh, it's that side. <laughs> the uh, camera's backwards, so uh, there we go. So that's that, the practice train you saw. This is Punchcraft. It's a bit like miniature rug making in that you use a, a large needle to push thread through and create a loop on this side. Uh, which then creates the image and uh, another train that is a steam obviously it's a steam engine uh, which is the Mallard the world record steam locomotive world record speed holder 126 miles an hour and A little bit of scraper board. Scraper board is porcelain clay on a backing board, uh, then coated with Indian ink. And I buy it like that, already coated, and then you scrape away the Indian ink to create the image. And in this particular case, we've applied uh, coloured ink, in this case green, uh, to form the grass. This, by the way, is the third, is only the third ever scraper board I've done. I'll show you the first two. The very first ever scraper board. I even opened the packet on stream. That's the first one. Portrait of a gentleman in the music industry called John Miles. Um, he was in the charts for quite a long time, but um, these days he works more behind the scenes. And um, one of his most famous music pieces is called Music. So that's John. And then I couldn't resist, given that it's it's a really black, lovely black space black board. And I know I said a lot of funny words there, but this board is sort of really black like space. It had to had to have an earth rise done. I don't do airbrushing on stream or engraving, so I won't show you any of that. But I do do some chainmail jewellery making, so a quick... Let me take my glove off for this. Um, a, a quick view of some jewellery, especially since I'm advertising the shop at the top. Um, this is a, a box necklace called a box weave and I have another one which is called which is a helm weave it's quite a nice um, necklace okay one and a half finished this is uh, this is a a cuff more than a bracelet uh, this is this is in dragon scale And despite the fact of what it looks like, it, it is quite um, quite flexible, and it's really tactile. 
Uh, a European uh, six in one weave. A relatively complex looking, but it's it's a I like it because it's complex looking. Um, it's called Candy Cane. Uh, half Persian four in one uh, and this is um, uh, <laughs> this is purple and green I know you're seeing blue but trust me it's purple <laughs> just the camera uh, this Logitech camera uh, has a problem with the purple except in really strong light and I can't get it much stronger at the moment uh, and everybody has the same problem with purple um, I need to finish I do indeed you're right I do need to finish that I have got the rings to do it it's just um, time and whether or not I do it on stream uh, so I've now got here a Swarovski crystal lace weave well it's strictly speaking this isn't even really sort of chain I suppose it is chain mail it's two in one sort of a chain but this is uh, a lovely Swarovski crystal sparkly bracelet in uh, in fern green and uh, crystal clear crystal again a box weave but a stretchy one no clasp needed which says all that fiddling about trying to fan, uh, fill trying to you know fasten a clasp Ooh. a European four in one so orange and black tiger stripe Mm, what else do we have in here? Um, a full Persian. It's rather nice. It's sort of like two chevron shapes but going in opposite directions. Mm. Just because I like the colours. This is the candy cane again but this is in Christmas colours. And it's that purple again. The magic purple that shows up blue. Um, it's a real it, it's a real blue it, it, I mean I can see why it shows blue because it's a real blue purple but it's it is purple uh, green and red now you, you can see better on here the sort of the complexity of that weave how it all sort of interwine intertwines and uh, Uh, Byzantine, which is a typical one, is a, is a gets used a lot. It's a very nice weave, and it's quite a simple weave to do. Um, and oh, I don't know. I've got a couple. Of, let's look at a couple more simple ones. Uh, that's about everything that's in there. That either gets called four in two or two in two. Um, but it's just a, a very simple chain doubled up. This one's all in pink. In fact, this is actually an anklet, so it's a bit longer than a bracelet. And not quite as long as a necklace. And... That's a single ring version of the same thing. So either a two-in-one or a one-in-one, depends on how you describe it. Each ring has got two rings going through it, but it's a unit is one in one. Um, where's my orange one gone? Hmm. I've got an orange version of that gold one, and oh, there it is. I was looking for that one and it's just it vanished but another there you got 
orange, orange and uh, orange and, and gold. And they actually look a lot different here in person. I know the camera doesn't really represent it very much. This is quite this is kind of an orange orange. Yeah, like a fruit type orange and that's uh, it is gold but it's it's more of a yellow gold. And man the rest of um, oh, I guess this is the only one weaver I've tried so far. So this is a half Persian three in one. So it's a bit more open than the where's the four in one? Okay, I'll grab this one. A four in one and a three in one as you can see uh, if I hold it that way. The bottom is the three in one, the top is the four in one, so it's a lot looser weave. Um, or more open weave, a lot more delicate looking. Aldith, hello, welcome. Exilian, thank you. That's very uh, kind of fluffy to you. Well, you will notice uh, Moobot there until um, it's until midnight Friday. I think it's Eastern Standard Time, but for it's 400 GMT. That's ten percent with that coupon code. Um, but after that. I will be running a 5% until the end of the month. So if you want to get in, you might want to get in with the 10%, but <laughs> that's up to you, of course. Um, so take a look. But take a note of the code, just in case, because Moobot will only put that up every 15 minutes. So that's just, uh, that's just open for, oh yeah. Just for a, sh a very introductory offer, shall we say? So that's carving, which you've seen. That's the pyrography. That's the scraper board, the punch craft, and the jewelry. That's all five that I do on stream. Old hat. Uh, hello from Huddersfield. One of my relatives used to live in Huddersfield. Welcome. I'm somewhere else in Yorkshire. <laughs> and how's that for timing? Moobot there, thank you. Steve-O, welcome. You've just missed the um, uh, the 15-minute the show-off. Ah... <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I apologise, Steve. You you did say you saw some of that. You uh, you said hi earlier. I apologise. I missed it. How's it going? Uh, not too bad, thank you. Um, this I'm off on holiday. Well, I'm, I, I am not at work this week. I won't say I'm on holiday. I'm busy clearing stuff out, emptying garages and things like that, and throwing out twenty years worth of stuff, which is going to keep me busy for the next week or so at least. So I'm probably working harder now than I do at work, but it's a different, yeah. You'll be familiar with it. It's uh, physical work as opposed to mental work. Mm, forget the mental bit. So how are you doing, steve -O? How's your job going? Um, uh, yeah, I noticed the uh, the drive time stuff is still, uh, still appearing. Oh, uh, no, I can't um, hold that, to be honest. Um, it's a good 20 years ago. Um, they they um, lived around uh, around there and then, then sort of moved somewhere else around sort of the, that um, area. Um, and then they've now gone, uh, gone right down to the south coast, so... I'm afraid I can't remember. Um, oh, I reached Pink Floyd. Oh, the wall. Oh, your new turntable. Ah, that's um, that's interesting. I I I didn't li I haven't listened to it yet, but I, th I I was going to because of course I saw the um, the title. That what do you call it? The revival of vinyl. Um, I still got quite a bit of my old stuff. And uh, I know my wife has. She's 
she likes vinyl uh, or rather um, she likes the the sort of really compressed odd sort of sound especially through valves of, of <laughs> I know it's it's a different sound um, so did you go all posh for a turntable or is it just a um, reasonably um, affordable one shall we say it's awesome what the the pink floyd are but yeah is uk dig hello there welcome good evening yeah i'm trying to think uh, i actually i actually don't re <laughs> remember what i've got in terms of vinyl I know my wife's got more than I have um, and uh, we certainly haven't listened to it for a long time. We do have a turntable and I did capture um, a fair number of it uh, so I can play it on the, on the current music system as well because uh, it's not it's kind of it was always nice getting a vinyl out and then spending 15 minutes cleaning it before you could actually put it on the turntable but uh, Audio Technica Oh, USB. Ah, okay. I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah, using the PC as the amplifier. I'm assuming. Uh, that's not inconvenient, SM, SVMS. Asking an artist to show off. There's not a lot com inconvenient about that, trust me. <laughs> not at all. Um, I, I wouldn't want, well, I probably would, but I wouldn't want to do it sort of every five minutes, but um, that's not a problem. Uh, I was thinking because we don't uh, we don't um, oh you you're running odd uh, ah, okay you're running you're running it analog is the word I was trying to say yeah oh um. yeah well Wolfdale we're always supposed to be good um, I. I usually can't tell the difference, to be honest, <laughs> most of the time. But um, I kind of uh, we we I say we do have a turntable and amp. I have no idea what it is, but probably could do with. Um, it's about thirty years old now. In fact, it probably is, given that we got it just after we got married. So. Um, do you kind of like that? Um, the the dragon carving was done with a reference picture. Um, this is being done. Yeah. This is being done sort of a uh, mix. The the this is of a cat called Junior, who about six months ago was sat at the well laid at the other side of the studio in that pose. And I just happened to have a block of wood in my hand, so I grabbed a pencil and just sketched on it that outline. And then um, I did a little bit of rough carving, but then, but I never did anything more with it. I just picked it up, if you like, again um, this week ish uh, and carrying on. So it's kind of from the imagination. It's not particularly meant to be an exact replica of Junior, it's just a typical pose of a cat. So I am. Kind of working from memory, although he did appear on the stream last night and was laid on my knee, so I was sort of using him as a live model at the time. So kind of a mix of all three. Have I ever tried doing things in clay? No, I haven't. Unfortunately, fortunately, it kind of interests me, but the mess doesn't. And he says, <laughs> with sawdust chips all over the desk and um. Yeah, when I do the rotary carving, that ends up with dust everywhere, not only on the desk. But yeah, clay just sort of... I sort of feel like I'd like to try it, but I'm not that good at 3D, 3D carving. 
um, which is obviously practice. This is effectively this is my first 3D piece if you don't count the fact it's flat on the bottom. Um, so you could almost call it a, a, a full height relief carving but um, uh, so I'm not you know I'd kind of probably want to practice with something a bit less messy than clay I kind of wanted to always do something like get ZBrush if it wasn't so expensive or mud box and uh, and do some electronic clay uh, sculpting but no I'm not uh, I've not tried real clay at all it does interest me though you will be using the PC. I don't know. Some people's PC amplifiers are better than uh, than many um, off the shelf amps, shall we say? <laughs> uh, SVMS five hundred. Thank you very much for the follow. Um, it uh, well, I, I'm. I have seen something. I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. I've seen a couple of uh, things that were sort of silver clay. Um, so I'm not quite sure. But I, uh, w one of the things I've got recently was um, some sterling silver rings, which I've then made into this silver metal bracelet. Uh, I did one for my wife as well. Um, the wholesalers were also selling silver clay but what you did with that is you to uh, once you've made something with it you to fire it in a kiln um which i guess consolidated the the silver powder um i'm not sure if it was actually true clay it was more I, I, it might have been more a wax or something like that because i've got a feeling that when you fired it in the clay what it did it was obviously the silver melted uh, and then the carrier sort of, I was going to say vanished, but I guess that would make it shrink quite a bit. So maybe I'm just being mistaken. I didn't really look at it too much. It sort of looked interesting, but expensive because it was silver, of course. But yeah, oh, sort of anything like that is, um, you know, I find interesting and uh, it, it sort of goes to the back of my mind as uh, maybe I'll try that one of these days. One of the was is it um, Jacksol or someone like I can't quite remember. It's something like Jacksol on uh, Twitch streams. Uh, use it as well modeling uh, i'll say clay modeling but what he uses is a wax based clay um which looks like it's only available in in the states which is unfortunate unless i want to import the stuff for quite a lot of money um but that kind of looks interesting it didn't look quite as sort of messy as an oil based clay and not as awkward to work with as a a water based clay uh you know you if you need it to you just warmed it up and and um, it sort of it became more fluid again um, but it would also similarly sort of set hard in quotes I guess for for wax based clay oh, okay no I um, don't know and um, yeah I've seen it uh, old hat um, but not uh, say not looked into it a great deal it did look interesting the um, say so the, the the price was a little bit sort of off-putting and uh, it uh, I'm not quite sure what it'd be afterwards because it, it wouldn't be solid silver, I guess. Um, yeah, plus I don't have a, I say, kiln. Um, I don't know what temperature it fired at, because obviously if you need a kiln, then they, you, you're going to 
buy one of those if you can sort of fire it at domestic oven temperatures then it's perhaps not so bad uh, yeah plast uh, plasti line oh you're talking about you you say plasti line uh, that could be something or do you mean plasticine because plasticine is sort of is an oil based non hardening I won't say clay but you know it's that sort of thing um, and uh, yeah the oil based stuff is um, well, the fact it, if it doesn't set then you've got to be always careful handling it um, but for practicing I can see it being you know, quite a useful thing you can just keep reusing the stuff yeah plus to seeing what you used to have as a kid um, I'm trying to think if there's a a craft variant of that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I am if I am. Uh, I'm fake yog. Yeah. No idea how to pronounce that. Sorry. Um, clay is expensive and the self is yeah. Any well, <laughs> silver. <laughs> Precious metals, they're not, um, they're not ch particularly cheap. Uh, I'm F.A. I'm, I'm fake. Yog. Sorry, I really don't know how to pronounce it, but thank you very much for the follow. 3D Bloat, good evening, welcome. It can be fine with the blood touch. Okay, it must be relatively low temperature stuff then. Um, I'm guessing it must be a silver alloy. probably means you you only um, you only melt the surface again as well I suppose so it, it sort of gives you a silver surface and then um, the although you've got silver on the inside it, that probably doesn't melt it's um, a bit like uh, it sounds a bit like the bronze 3d filament um, where where you the 3d filament you print it out and then uh, effectively because the filament contained bronze powder um, what you can then do is polish it so you sort of polish away the plastic on the surface and sort of leave the embedded bronze uh, and then you can get a bronze like um, a bronze like surface on something that's been 3d printed which uh, actually strikes me as being um, interesting. Uh, same with the um, there's a wood fiber variant of that as well. You can get wood fiber, so you can print, three D print, what would appear to be wooden objects. I kind of wonder what how they'd react to pyrography because apparently you can change the the color of the wood effect by varying the temperature in the nozzle. So you are effectively while you're printing it out applying pyrography to the wood fibers which sounded quite interesting um, uh, maybe I'll have to have a, uh, a look at some of the YouTube videos um, I, I'm not likely to be trying it anytime soon to be honest but um, it does sound uh, sound interesting <laughs> what fine yeah fine silver that'll be that's an interesting um definition i wonder what the assay office would say about that <laughs> so how are you doing uh, 3d block are you um Uh, been practicing with your uh, your oily paint stuff, and uh, are you thinking of making a a reappearance in uh, on Twitch so that we can uh, we can watch it? Oh, 
Oh, and it was bright sunshine up here today, by the way. No darkness at all. Or clouds. <laughs> yeah, because of the because of the jewelry, and uh, and me making my own bracelet. Um, I've sort of been looking up, uh, reading all up about assays and assay offices and hallmarks and things like that. Oh, you're into uh, you're into spring tires. I, I've not yet. I, I I I'm interested in getting that, but I I I kind of would like to have well a couple of things. One is I'd like to have it work with the wheel and you know uh, gear lever and pedals because I don't think it does yet. Um, and I quite like an interior cab view, you know, internal view, so you could actually drive them as opposed to kind of driving them like a remote control truck at the moment. But uh, it does look, uh, they, they do look interesting. I've watched quite a lot of videos on them. Uh, Zakenvar, or, or Zakienwal, thank you very much for following. Yeah, indeed, uh, old hat in the UK. Um, silver over 6.7 grams in weight uh, has to be hallmarked um, if it's being sold so it doesn't have to be hallmarked but to describe it as sterling silver then it has to be hallmarked if it weighs more than 6.7 grams finished um, if it's under that weight it can be described as sterling silver with no problem um, you can sell it if it's over that weight but you have to describe it as silver metal um, because you um, uh, to to ensure that you do not uh, give the impression that it is sterling silver even though you may have made it as like this bracelet i've got on is made from sterling silver rings and I, I call it a silver metal bracelet just because i do sell jewelry and i don't want anybody to get confused but this is um, so it's a silver metal bracelet for that reason. Um, it's the same as gold. If gold, if there's more than one gram of gold in the item, it has to be hallmarked, and uh, otherwise you can only describe it as gold metal. And uh, if you've used both, or you've used gold in, or even silver in conjunction with something else, it's then a mixed metal, and that gets a bit more complicated again. But yes, is it expensive? Um, it well, that's a relative question. To be honest, old hat, um, you have to be registered with the with an off assay office. Generally speaking, well, you can only have things hallmarked at an office that you're registered with in the UK, and there's four of them. So generally speaking, you'd, you'd pick one of them, and they have different charges. Um, so I think I think the Edinburgh one is the one I look, looked at most closely because it looked cheaper. It's fifty pounds to register, and thereby get what they call a sponsor's mark. So that's the the whole mark. Sorry, that's the the maker's mark. If you like, that's that's stamped on there. Usually three letters. You then have to have pay for a stamp to be created, which they then store and use or don't use, depending on on what the whole, how the whole marking is done. Um, and then you pay for each item that you have hallmarked, and that varies. Um, Sheffield, I think there's, there's a hallmark office in Sheffield which charge, I think it's £20 per package and then 20p for each item within the package. 
and then there's an additional charge if you have to have laser hole marking as opposed to it being stamped and things like that so um, if you're doing hundreds of items or a lot you know then potentially it's not particularly expensive but if you're doing one off and you, you know you're stuck with a 20 pound um, package charge then yeah it gets quite pricey um, 3D, you'd actually buy a yeah well, well I already have the wheel so uh, but yeah um, yeah although, I mean, it's, I mean it, it is a fascinating game and uh, yeah, it's about it seems to be about the closest to actual sort of mud running that you can get with a with a truck um, I'm going to say they for me this the views look like I'd be running a, a remote control truck it, it, it's more like that sort of view to me when I when I see it so uh, I'm probably a little bit more used to uh, to seeing that sort of three-dimensional thing because of course I run the model trucks <laughs> yeah it is somewhat um, old hat um, as I say I, I seriously considered um, you know, being able to add sterling silver items as not only stuff I do on, on stream but to the shop so to help pay for some of the stuff on stream but it's um, unless unless I do a lot it's um, it's just too expensive So I've just got, well, I'm going to say I've just got one for myself. I mean, I'm going to quite happily make other people uh, one, but it would be a silver metal. It wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be sterling silver, or it wouldn't be described that uh, like that. Which means, yeah, it's fine if um, if if you're happy with that, but uh, you've got no guarantee in theory of the uh, the quality of the uh, the silver that's being used because it's quite weird as well you can um, if you buy pre-made sil uh, sterling silver rings for example you can buy f uh, I don't know a kilogram of them that's okay because it's not a finished article so you can buy rings you can buy wire you can buy as much of you as you like of that and it can be described as sterling silver <laughs> and it doesn't have to be all marked it's only the finished articles um, yeah oh you used to actually do the real stuff uh, that's uh, <laughs> yeah you say as you get older you don't like the mess quite so much <laughs> hence me not doing clay uh, but yeah how do you keep the knives sharp um effective well okay effectively they, they're not getting blunt i've done uh, i mean the chisels um are not really getting blunt but um they they do they don't cut as well shall we say uh, and i suppose there's a definition of what's sharp and what isn't and and what sharpening means but what i um what what usually happens most of the time with either with the chisels that i was using earlier like like this one all of the knives is um, the very sharp edge on them if you imagine my fingers are the sharp edge what happens is that the edge as you're using it the edge tends to bend over because it's really really thin and then you start driving, as you can imagine, you're, you're driving into the wood, which obviously causes it to bend more because it's now at an angle, and that's when it starts to feel as though it's not sharp. So effectively all I do is I, I run them on a strop. Um, this is a piece of leather um, fastened to a board. It doesn't have to be. Um, it's easier if it is, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it can be you know it can be a loose piece of leather and then all I do is I use a, a polishing compound which is what this is it's a fine a fine abrasive basically 
which which um, has a polishing action more than anything. Uh, but then I just run the run the blade. And this is a curved blade, so it's a little bit awkward. But I just run the blade uh, across the uh, the leather, and what that's doing is it's effectively straightening out that edge. So it, you know, it, and that's why you run it both ways. So you, it, it's it, what they describe it as: you create a burr when you're carving, you straighten the burr out. A little bit of the edge does break off, um, and that's what the polishing compound does: is just restore that sharp edge on on bits of the metal that break off. By saying bits of the metal that break off, I'm talking about submicroscopic things that you can't see. The black stuff that's on here is metal. Um, so, but it's so so tiny. It's not like little physical pieces that you can see or anything like that. It is literally microscopic. Um, now, because this blade has got a slight curve, I'm actually doing it on this piece of leather, which is has got a curve on it. So it means I can get the full width of the blade. But that's enough to uh, to keep it sharp and. I've been using the chisels for three years now, and that's that's as close as I've got to sharpening them. Indeed, the date for exactly the same reasons. Um, most most of the barbers would use a long length of um, leather for that, um, but yes, they're, they're doing it for exactly the same reason uh, with the cutthroat razors. Um, they 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 burr they, they burr over. And they're just straightening that burr out to to re restore the edge, and it's <laughs> it it is a significant difference. Um, if, it, just that with this just that demonstration with this knife, I can see I can feel the difference it's made to the cutting edge. So effectively, what I will do is probably drop a knife, you know, at least once an hour if not more. Same with the chisels when I'm using them. Um, you can in theory overstrop them, you know, um, but you know, when you, you basically, when it feels a little bit hard going, just um, run it through the, uh, or over the strop. to swap knives that click is a bad noise because <laughs> it means that the, the the knife has sort of skipped uh, which is one way of creating that burr now I want to make the cat a little bit thinner doing it again um, a little bit thinner in fact I'd probably be better using a chisel for this so we'll do so um, so I'll use a u-shaped gouge when I find it's there I'm not being I'm not being purist about having to use just hand knives or anything. I'm using whatever tool seems appropriate. And I'm using using the gouge because it's got you can, if you can see the edge there, it's U shaped, it's quite it's quite a tight radius on this one. Which means I can get um, I can get quite a deep cut here, which is kind of what I'm after, just around here. And the, just the nature of the chisel means I can come around that curve, which I can't do with the knife uh, because you just can't get the point in at the at the apex of the curve here. The knife blade is just in all the wrong positions to be able to uh, to actually carve that. Uh, 
I am holding this chisel perhaps what might look a little bit um, bit awkward but um, I've got a lot because I'm hand holding this uh, it gives me a lot better control of the chisel um, such that I'm less likely to stab myself with it because um, I can't apply a lot of force when I'm holding it this way but it's it's uh, uh, to give you an idea of why I hold it like that while I'm doing this is um, imagine yourself with a pencil you hold a pencil you hold it with a tip and you um, you can write and you can write quite small and quite detailed now try taking the pencil holding it at the other end and doing exactly the same thing you'll find it's somewhat more challenging and it's the same with the chisel when I'm holding it back here um, it's a little bit harder and I would and naturally they use my thumb as as to help guide that uh, I didn't actually do any cutting but uh, to simulate that and it's a little bit easier with the chisel than it would be with a pencil because the pencil is tip is moving with this I'm digging into the wood and I've got a pivot point but um, holding it back here at the tip like this um, just gives me a lot more control it, it's you know it's that pencil effect uh, what's the wood I'm using the wood, uh, okay the wood I'm using and how much and where um, the wood I am using here it's got two names in America it gets called basswood in the in the States it gets called basswood uh, it's getting called that more in Europe but it it's also as commonly known as European lime wood uh, in Europe and it's a it's a very nice wood uh, for carving uh, especially for beginners like me uh, because of the characteristics of the wood um, it's also a good wood for pyrography um, but there are better woods if you'd want to do a large sheet of it if you want to um, if you want to use uh, it for pyrography uh, if I was sort of doing a, a, a small a box or something that was made out of a wood and had a choice of the wood then um, basswood European lime would be one of the choices I could make as there's, there's about two or three uh, for something like that but um, the the pictures that I do um, I wouldn't use a solid piece of wood um, and I, I use plywood because it's more stable uh, and less prone to warping uh, when it's in thin sheets with pyrography applied and I've not yet seen any basswood plywood <laughs> Um, as to how much of a piece of string I'm afraid it depends on the size of the wood um, you know this was a piece about one and a half by two inch uh, and it was about uh, two feet long and um, I probably paid about ten pound for that I think um, but it really depends on on whether it's an offcut or for some of a larger sheet. So the wood merchant, you know, it's is it an offcut off a larger sheet? Was it specifically cut to size? Um, how you know? Did you buy a big piece? Did you buy a small piece? Did you buy um, a lot of it? <laughs> uh, I can't really say to be honest. But if you the easiest way is just do a search for either basswood or European lime wood um, and see uh, what you come up with tend to stay away from craft shops they will perhaps sell, sell small blocks of it which is quite expensive go more for a wood merchants so, or um, the sort of merchants that would sell to people doing things like bowl blanks for, for uh, you know machine carving uh, because of course they tend to buy bigger blocks um, so they have off cuts and things like that so you can buy small pieces quite uh, quite cheaply <laughs> yeah it does uh, it do that I uh, you see wood piles and I kind of do the same thing I want to pick it up but um, 
it's uh, you need wood that's really um, for carving like this you need wood that's really relatively dry um, carving wet wood it's a bit like trying to carve a sponge um, that's a that's a little bit of a misnomer but um, it, it's quite it can be quite challenging to uh, to to carve newly newly cut wood uh, hand carve it anyway um, because the wood literally the wood is springy it's a bit like a sponge I mean that after all is is how the sap gets up the tree it's going through cells um, and that's um, uh, sort of how a sponge is constructed for um, for wet wood sort of like n newly cut trees and things like that you're better off um, using powered tools a more rotary style power tool so the chainsaw um, things like an Arbitec wheel which is kind of like um, uh, a powered plane but instead of being a flattening knife it's more like a, a grinder sort of shape um, they work quite you know very well on um, on the more green wood it's something I'm um, we're having some tree work done and possibly losing a few trees in the process and um, sort of not quite sure whether I want them to take away the trunks or stack them somewhere or just leave a few around and you know maybe get myself an Abatec grinder <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you need dry wood for uh, for um, for wood burning. So um, uh, yeah, it would be. Wood isn't wood, dried wood though isn't cheap. Um, free. Um, before you get him to swap it out, you might want to, um, unless you already know, sort of investigate the costs of it because. Um, you know, if you go into like let's say into a forest and just take um, uh, stuff off a off a tree, you then kind of have to stack it for six six months to a year in a dry place, uh, sorry, a covered place, uh, before it'll burn easily. Otherwise, you get a heck of a lot of smoke. Um, and you do know it's quite hard. Well, you do know it's quite hard work, don't you? <laughs> a wood boiler. Unless, of course, you're getting one of these automatic ones that are fed with wood pellets. And then they're obviously a lot easier um, because they're fully mechanically fed and they're mechanically, uh, the ash is mechanically raked. Oh, you're, um, you're on bottle. You're, you, you, you're not on men's gas. Oh. What... Um, what you, uh, what you, the other thing for gas is you can have large tanks fitted, you know, uh, static tanks, not not the carry tanks, not even the big carry tanks, but I mean, sort of, um, yeah, two hundred gallon gas tanks uh, fitted. Um, I know Cala do them, and then they just they, they basically come with a big tanker uh, and pressure fill it, um, so you don't need to. Um, uh, carry bottles around and that's a lot cheaper than the bottles are uh, do you do spoons uh, no I don't um, shall we say I haven't rather than I don't uh, it's not something I've tried yet I don't really have the chisel the chisels or chisel uh, to do a spoon I could do a shallow spoon uh, with uh, with this this gouge for or the gouges I've got for example uh, but it would only be a shallow uh, gouge with a uh, shallow spoon with these uh, to get to get the deeper uh, spoons you know like proper utensil type spoons where you, you've actually got a deeper bowl um, what you need is a a spoon knife or a spoon chisel uh, they're kind of the cutting edge on this is on the top 
and the bevel is underneath um, so the, the the bevel is 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 the bit that you put in in contact with the wood um, so people who use flat chisels for example um, especially if they just sort of go to the DIY place and buy a chisel just to do chiseling with what they'll often do is you see this is a flat chisel it's got a flat edge and it's got a beveled edge what so if they were going to cut down the down a hole a lot of people will take the flat edge and put it on against their line and hammer it down they're actually using the chisel backwards and it won't stay to the line it'll drift because what you the cutting <laughs> the cutting edge is the bevel so you act or the flat edge is the bevel so you actually put the chisel in with the bevel against your line and drive down and uh, what will happen then is the chisel will still drift as you as you go down but it will drift into the wood that you're cutting away so uh, you know you, you, it's like a fail safe if you like it will it will tend to drive that way and the, and this is the wood you're going to cut away so it you know you just clear a bit of wood go back in and do that again you do it the other way and it sort of undercuts <laughs> and ruins what you're trying to do um but with a um with a spoon knife the first thing that happens is the bevels the other way up um which is kind of odd but it's the other way up uh to, to this and then what you have is it, it tends to be shaped to one side a, a true spoon knife is anyway it's sort of i'm trying to explain it but it's kind of like that sort of shape <laughs> if that makes sense so you've got the side of the chisel uh, here and then the, the knife bit is is off the side of it and is that sort of shape so that you can obviously scoop in uh, without having the this which is obviously the handle getting in the way because um, if you've done a spoon of course you've got the handle and you've got the, the bowl if you're trying to get in here that the handle gets in your way <laughs> you can only go so far so um, with the with the handle out this side of the chisel out here with the blade off to the left say you can carve in quite easily it's kind of the equivalent of doing that and of course your handles out the way then so I haven't got the right blade to do that with but it's an interesting thing to do and maybe I'll do it in the future So you have the big orange tanks. Oh, you're not allowed the real big tanks. They can even, um, as far as I know, they could even be buried, which is, um, oh, yeah, those big tanks. Yeah. I know somebody that used to, yeah, who used to have those as well. As you say, they're heavy. They used to have four with auto changeovers between pairs. Fifty pound, three bottles a month. Yeah, it is pricey. Oh, electric fan eaters cheaper. Oh, blimey. That is pricey. I've never, I've, yeah, my, my parents used to have the big, you know, the static tank. Um, I'm surprised because it was, it was, I'm just trying to think my parents, if you, you know, those orange bottles, if you laid four down and stack them in a square, um, the tank's only about that size. Yeah, obviously rounded. Um, but the tank, uh, the, there are tanks only about that sort of size. So I'm kind of surprised that you're not um, you're not allowed. Um, yeah. No mains gas, and oh by the way, you've to buy these little tiny bottles. <laughs> uh, it's the estate owner, um, you know, in with the bottled gas company, because it certainly sounds like it. At that sort of price, I'd have thought you'd have, you know, the whole estate would have been able to sort of club together and get um, and get mains gas fitted. Ethan Jones, uh, good evening, welcome. Uh, Ethan Brown, mm. uh, I hope you're talking about the um, the work that I'm doing because if not then 
Feel free to move on. Uh, thank you very much, Ethan Jones. Good job I'm not doing pyrography, otherwise at this point I'd be saying um, th that you were wrong. It was quite hot, but anyway. That depends, Ethan Brown, on exactly how you carry on talking. Um. <laughs> I don't know, there's quite a few uh, English people around uh, Old Hat uh, that are streaming. Well, the, uh, with my parents, they had the tank was at the back and it was about 50 feet. Ethan Brown, thank you very much for the follow. Um, it was about 50 or 60 feet from the road and um, it was basically just a, the, you know, like a British oxygen company type tank. I think you've seen them on the road with a, with a, a pressure hose uh, on a reel at the back. So they just reeled it out. I don't know. I guess it'd been about, must have been easily a hundred feet of hose on the, um, on the reel or something like that. So don't know. That way. <laughs> uh, there's a there's some text just there <laughs> where the knife is pointing. Um, that's a sleeping pussy cat. So it's been worked on fairly slowly because I am. Um, this is the I feel like the first first dish 3D piece that I've ever carved. I've only ever done uh, relief carving and I've not particularly used knives before uh, for doing it so it's, uh, it's taking its time but I'm getting there. At the moment I'm just trying to shape the, uh, shape the back because it's, it's, it's a bit too tall. It's not so bad on this side but the, the tail fools you as to the height um, it's a bit tall on this side but I can't really go down much more now because I've made the uh, the head uh, and that won't go any smaller effectively so um, you don't look at the back so much so the, the front side doesn't look so bad so it's now just shaping that Uh, well, my eyesight's already going and I'm not that old yet uh, Ethan Jones, not far off but not that old, I'm over 50 and thank you very much Ethan Brown um, no I probably won't old hat, I tend to like the wood in its in its um, in its natural shape oh, sorry natural shape, its natural texture um I have no particular objection to painting it, but it kind of like doesn't really add anything in something like this. If I was doing, I don't know, I mean things like uh, the dragon for example, um, which for those that haven't seen it, I'd... so with the dragon for example, if I, if I was going to paint that what I'd probably do is paint the mountain that he stood on and then perhaps paint the sky that's around him and leave the 
leave the dragon unpainted because I don't I, I don't even particularly like to varnish them I kind of like the wood itself it, and it does develop like a, a, a it oxidizes slightly and you get a slight color difference I don't know if you can see you can sort of see just here on the arm uh, I say it's arm front paw it's, it's slightly darker wood but it goes like that over time and I kind of just like that so thank you very much both of you that's uh, that's kind of you yeah, that was done a little while ago on stream uh, that took about five weeks I think it was and um, I was pleased when it was finished <laughs> so I could move on to something else we did some pyrography after that. No, I haven't, um, Ethan Brown. Um, in uh, yeah, that, that actually is a. It's not, it's not a competition grade piece by any means. Um, I've only been carving for three years, um, and not particularly consistently. Um, it's only this year that I've been that I've been streaming that I actually have done I've done more carving this year than I've done in the three years um, just because when I'm on stream I've got to well, either carve or do one of the other crafts um, so I've actually done more art this year than than at any other time so but that that really isn't I, I, you know thank you for you guys you know sort of saying how good it is but it's not a competition grade piece Plus I'm not that into competitions to be honest. Uh, now you could say that's because I probably wouldn't win but um, I'm just not into competitions whether I'd win or not. Ethan Jones, thank you. Ethan Jones S. Hmm. Thank you for all the follow. Do I have my own business? No. Well. <laughs> do I have my own business yes and no <laughs> um, what you're seeing me do is a hobby okay I don't have this is not my business I, I work in telecommunications uh, I deal a lot with numbers um, so all the crafting you see done on stream is a hobby um, however it's a hobby which is relatively expensive you know knives are Still got the label up. No, I don't. Yeah, a knife is fifteen twenty pounds. Um, the the jewellery that you know. Um, I don't know, a piece of jewel. Just uh, this is chainmail jewellery. Uh, the, the, there's about a pound's worth of material in that. In fact, there's probably more because uh, I haven't actually worked it out. But you know, a, a ring will cost about five p. So, um, you know, the um, pyrography, you know, a, a pen is 20, 20, 25, 30 pounds. The, the wood, you know, is anything up to, well, depends on the size, six, eight, ten pounds. Um, you know, scraper board and things like that. So I, I sort of have started I started, if you like, selling some of the things that I make. The jewellery is the, is the first of those. And so I do have an Etsy shop. And the jewellery is uh, is available to buy in the shop. The pyrography, will, or some of the pyrography, will probably get added next. Um, carving, however, I mm, suspect not. Just purely because... You know, things like um, Ruth the dragon that you saw there was something like, as I say, about five weeks. So that's well over 100 plus hours. And if you if you sort of um, work out, you know, just what that might cost. Um, there's not too many people that would perhaps be willing to pay that sort of money.
Ethan Jones, stop. Stop right now. Because if you make another comment like that, you're banned. Saying sorry afterwards is not appropriate. Obix, good evening. And welcome. As for streaming, yes, streaming is brilliant. And creative streaming is even more so. Now, a lot of people who discover creative stream, uh, the creative streamers, tend not to watch too many games afterwards. I certainly um, don't. <laughs> Indeed, Fluffy Twiggler, thank you. Lurking there. That's a very gentle reminder, um, folks. You will see just to the left of Fluffy Twiglet's um, name. Well, at least that's a good outcome then, Ethan Brown. Uh, do you mean that you actually um, stream? Uh, old hat. Uh, yes, it, it, well, it kind of is. Well, and all the all the arts and crafts are, to be honest. Um, they are very relaxing, um, providing something doesn't go wrong. And then the reason I say that is, for example, with the jewelry, quite often. Um, I've been asked, especially for the jewellery, the, the chain mail, yeah, you must need a lot of patience for that. And the answer is no, you don't. Or not my definition of patience anyway. Um, patience, patience is something which I describe as needing when something is not going right and you're having to sort of work your way through it. You know, um, you, you, you're mixing paint and the colour keeps going wrong or um, you're um, you know uh, with rings for example you keep dropping dropping the ring or dropping the piece of work or it doesn't you, you build up the weave and it, it's it's wrong and you have to start again or, or you just can't see what's wrong with it or with something you know just something else it's going wrong you can't get it right you get frustrated, you know, the, the rage quit stuff. Um, that's 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 when you need patience, and that's the uh, that's when it's kind of not therapeutic, if you see what I mean, or relaxing. Um, but at that point, is if you, provided you recognise, you just go, you know what, this is meant to be fun. Stop. If you need to stop, come back later, or just say, you know, it's meant to be fun. I'll try again get out of that mentality and yes it's back to being relaxing and um, when I'm carving uh, and it's I keep having to remind myself when I'm streaming um, I keep having to uh, remind myself a to talk and b to keep looking up at the uh, the chat window because otherwise I get lost in it uh, and you know two three hours will disappear very quickly as they do even when I'm streaming and um, you know, it's yeah, it's relaxing, very relaxing. <laughs> I don't go to sleep while I'm doing it, especially with sharp knives around. But uh... pointer, be careful. Um, you might a um, couple of problems with um, with music and one is of course balancing it against the voice so that um, you're not um, 
We've got two louder music. You can use auto ducking, of course, if you if you need it to. Uh, and uh, that's that's one way around that. The second is I do, it's you know I, there's a lot of information in in my streams if you want to uh, to listen to that information. If I play music, I have to find royalty free music or music where I have the broadcast rights <coughs> to uh, to broadcast it on stream otherwise Twitch will mute the the, uh, the video and then you can't hear what I've said if you play the video back and you can't hear the music either um, so finding music either with broadcast rights or that can be you know, where they have given away the broadcast rights royalty free music usually it has has that stipulation um, is mm, can be interesting and finding music that I actually like or want to put on the stream because I don't particularly want anything which is going to compete with what I'm doing so I probably want things like chill out music you might call or ambient music and yes I do agree that for the points when I'm not talking particularly uh, and I get lost in what I'm doing it would be quite useful As, as I say, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I. I think I probably want to play something just in the background, but it would be sort of low-level, quiet, um, laser. Because sometimes, you know, it's everybody's sort of laid back. You know, nobody's particularly interested in chatting. Um, I get when when that happens, if you like. Um, I um, tend to forget, and I just start carving or whatever it is. And so a little bit of ambient music in the background at least would uh, would make it a little bit more interesting for people to uh, to see whilst they're busy lurking doing something else. Uh, okay, Ethan Jones. Sort of um, since since they're watching, um, then hi Kenneth and hi Mark. Yeah, that's the, that's that's the, really the the hard one, isn't it? Um, to uh, to find is um, is is what's the right type of music? I don't know. Um, the the sort of music that I I would if I if I wasn't streaming, the sort of music that I would sort of uh, probably end up listening to. Uh, whilst I'm doing this sort of thing would be something like pan pipes um, that sort of you know I, I want to say oriental but it's not what I'm uh, ethnic type sounds um, you know, mountain you know um, sort of Pan Pipes, I'm trying to think, there's one album that I've got of Pan Pipes, it's Pan Pipes of the Andes, so there's, there's uh, that sort of, um, you know, Flight of the Condor uh, is one of the tracks, I think, that sort of thing is what I'd listen to outside of uh, a streaming. Obviously I can't, I can't use those because they are copyrighted um, songs and I'm not sure, so it, it's going to have to be something... Um, I say fairly quiet anyway, um, and just sort of an ambient sound. <laughs> That's okay. I see television with almost instant feedback. Uh, why do I wear the glove? Okay. I wear the glove because that's a sharp knife. Um, oh, that's a sharp chisel, and they are sharp, believe me. Um, I have, not whilst I've been using the chisel, but when I've been putting away other chisels, I have caught myself on the corners of this chisel, this one in particular. Um, 
and it's and, and I've had a bead of blood and that's just off the corner um, the actual cutting edge is somewhat sharper um, and these are I could easily slice a finger off with with one of these and uh, my my right hand is safe generally speaking because of the technique of carving I'm holding the blade in such a way uh, the knife in such a way that it's I won't say it's impossible but it's really difficult most of the time for the blade to make contact with my right hand with my left hand however um, uh, generally speaking it's safe as well but there will be times when you're just doing something like this and you don't quite notice what you're doing you're distracted and I don't know if you can see that I that's almost in contact now if I didn't wear a glove I did that I could end up slicing myself this glove is is has got Kevlar fibers wo uh, woven into it uh, and what they do is effectively they they resist the knife slicing through the material. So you know, if I was to do something like like that um, across there, and I try effectively were trying if you like to slice my finger because the knife slipped, then um, the glove will protect my hand, and that's essentially why why I wear it. Not because I'm expecting an accident. But because it's the unexpected, it's where I've been distracted, especially I'm streaming, of course, and I might just look up at, at chat or somebody will follow, which will produce the, um, the, the graphic and the sound, which might just distract me. Um, it, it's there just for additional safety. Um, but I try very much not to ever need it. Um, was I carving yesterday? Yes, I was carving yesterday, Obix. Um, I think. I think it was Saturday night. Was the night one night when I didn't carve? I, I did jewelry because of my thumb was hurting. That sort of noise. Uh, Kelly one two three. Thank you very much for the follow. Um, so Ethan Jones. Okay, well, from eight p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, point hair 44 thank you very much for following um you know it is i've stopped carving while people are following then i don't get the chance um, but 8 p.m uk time tomorrow night that's 1900 hours gmt uh no i've never heard of slim jesus it might uh, might take a look one day but So the back's coming down a bit. I need to bring these shoulders down a bit more and uh, a bit more into the neck a little bit more. And I will need to take some of this area out here because his paw effectively is across here. Uh, which, will, which will give me a little bit more of a neck and chest on this side as well. having the wrong direction even when you're using a knife uh, uh, as you do with chisels you have to remember where the wood grain is and which direction you're cutting uh, because you can end up as I did there slicing off a section of wood that you perhaps didn't intend to slice off just because what you've done is you've you've you sort of slotted it slotted into the plane of the grain and it and it just causes the wood to split apart and so you can sometimes end up with a big split that you didn't intend uh, what I was working on earlier was slimming down this pussycat well, Junior is quite chunky he's got a lot of muscle um, He's not particularly fat. He's still sort of, I say, a chunky cat, but he's still not that chunky. Sometimes you end up having to hold this piece because it's quite small. 
in a relatively awkward position like this and right whilst I'm working here I don't have a problem but if I was to do trying to do something like that around there and I'm trying to hold the board like this you can see how there is a risk and it, I'm mitigating the risk uh, XSL snuggle puss uh, this is just eyeball literally um, there's no the, the template if you like is a real cat um, that was a, 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 I drew the outline of about six months ago on the, on this piece of wood um, he does appear on stream from time to time like he did last night and laid on my knee so I was sort of studying his face because the face is going to be the awkward bit for me um, I was sort of studying his face and the shape of his neck but essentially I'm just you know, I'm just eyeballing it, looking at that and going, I want to change this bit. Um, I'm, this is my first stroke, second uh, hand, full 3D carved object. Uh, and it's the first one I've extensively used the knives on. Uh, so I don't really know what I'm doing. So this is just kind of, uh, I keep doing a bit and going, mm, okay, you know, the shoulders are too high now compared to the to the back in fact I've got a bump there so I'll just go you know I'll just look at it and just carve that off because I want, don't want to bump there I want it to bump up and there to be a dip in his back around here yeah, be, and then come up to the shoulder blades so it's just sort of looking at it and just going mm, I'll change that Crypticus, thank you very much for the follow. <laughs> yes, indeed, uh, Fluffy Twiglet. That's um, well. I don't mind if he wants to watch. He just can't talk. Ah, okay. Oh, right. No, no, you're right. Um, you're right, old hat. <laughs> then, in that case, yeah, I do like a tune. <laughs> um, I used to play music as well, so I used to play uh, a corner E flat horn. Uh, I've played uh, you know, some other instruments as well, so I do kind of like a tune uh, and rap. Mm, Rap's okay, but it's not it's not something I enjoy. Or some rap is okay, um, but it's not something I enjoy listening to particularly. And offensive rap, no thank you. Offensive anything is not particularly interesting music for me. I actually like a lot of instrumental music and... Um, uh, music which almost tells a story or has some sort of thing in it um, uh, I mean as, as sort of as a, an example if anybody ever watches any of the Star Treks the theme the theme songs from Star Trek whichever Star Trek series you you want to pick they kind of have a um, a feel for them which is um, you know, it's exploration, hope, uh, you know, soaring into the distance, these sorts of words. Um, you know, that that's uh, is sort of music I enjoy listening to. That and um, I mean, they they are full orchestral um, pieces on 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 the shows, but um, doesn't have to be. I say, in fact, there was. Um, I haven't seen him on for a while, which is a pity. There's um, there was a streamer um, here on Twitch that uh, what he streamed was making um, flutes, but they were a particular type of flute. Um, so a, a, more more like a panpipe type sound. For a flute, uh, as opposed to sort of the, the the metal flute that you'll hear in an orchestra. So, 
Um, and he used to play, uh, just play, I don't know what he used to play, used to, whether it was random notes or whatever. But that was a, that was a really interesting stuff to listen to as well. Okay. Jim Reeves. <laughs> uh, and Vivaldi, yeah. Brass band, yeah. Yeah, especially live. That's true. A lot of um, a lot of people, a lot of producers. When they, um, I've got a fair few brass band, um, vinyl records. So you can tell they're a little old. Um, and on quite a few of those, the um, the the power of the brass band has just been sort of equalised out. They just you know the mix is just um, badly mixed, such that you know it you that you lost the power of the the brass instruments, and it just sounded just sounded quite flat. So yeah, brass live is. Um, Generally speaking, a completely different order of things, and I do like um, I do like brass, but they're going to like quite a lot of music live. Uh, today's pop music, I can't tell the difference between live and uh, and um, recorded, but um, you know, things like brass bands, uh, um, full orchestra quite enjoy listening to okay so that's slimming in quite nice let's do the same on this side split the wood off there which is not what I want it to do uh, jazz some jazz I like, some jazz is a bit too jazzy. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, um, I, I wouldn't ever say I particularly like or dislike like an artist or, or something like that. Um, I kind of like what I like when I like it. Um, so I don't um, I don't particularly follow any particular artists or anything like that. There are certain artists that you might have, uh, you know, I don't know, Status Quo, for example, where you go, well, you know, I'm, I'm likely to like most of what they output. Or John Miles, for example. Uh, you know, most of his stuff, which is old now, of course, but I, I like listening to that. And uh, modern stuff, it's it's a case of if I listen to it, I like it. I'll listen to it. If I don't, then I don't. <laughs> and very rarely, actually, do I know the names of the piece or even who it is that I'm actually listening to. I don't re well. I don't really listen to the music category all that often. Uh, for a, um, I'm not well. I don't really I say I don't really basically because I don't. Um, I do, I watch a lot of Twitch, uh, in quotes. When I say watch, whilst I'm working, and it's it, a stream will be on whilst I'm I'm working, and I'm kind of listening to it, but. Only sort of really not taking a lot of notice of it, but I'm listening to it, and it's kind of like background ambience, and uh, it has to be someone talking, so uh, not like a game stream. Uh, it has to, you know, like some me doing this, if you like. Uh, I'd listen to, so I'd often listen to something like Eddie Fall Guy or uh, Lockie when he's doing uh, Chainmail over down there in Australia. Um, and I'll uh, I'll listen to them because I can concentrate better when I've got voices going on in the background. And occasionally I'll take a look at what they're doing. <laughs> 
but obviously that depends on what I'm doing at work. But if I put music on, I have a tendency to stop and listen to music, and, I, and therefore it's completely distracting. <laughs> so I don't I don't explore um, music category that often because you know I come on from work, I have my tea, and then it's almost time to stream. And after the stream, you know I I used to do things like watch you free, um, or I watch the train sim during the week. Uh, usually at the same time and um, whilst you're watching those it's kind of hard to listen to music at the same time so uh, and then it's sort of bedtime so that's a problem when you're streaming you see you never have any time uh, well if you do free um, I'll watch <laughs> I don't write tunes like this. No, but they never did write tunes like they used to. Um, and in ten years' time, they'll be saying exactly the same thing about today's artists. You know, um, they didn't. They, they, you know, they don't write tunes like they did in uh, two thousand and fifteen. That's interesting, Leia, because I, I, I don't mind either. Um, so, you know, single woodwind instruments like that. When they're played with somebody who knows what they're doing, um, yeah, I can I can quite happily listen to them. It has to be, obviously, what they have to play has to suit the instrument. But yeah, I can listen to, uh, to solos on those. And you get things like the clarinet, um, yeah, clarinet, akabilk. The, he used to play the clarinet, clarinet a lot, that sort of thing. But you know, when I was a lad, <laughs> my singing voice is, is dropped quite a lot. I used to sing. I used to uh, when I was well at school. I used to be in a choir. Uh, and I, well, I could, and I still can sometimes sing in tune. Um, but I, it's, it's quite hard work these days to actually get onto tune. My uh, my voice is uh, uh, it's terrible these days. Half the time I don't sing in tune. <laughs> but. Yeah, when I'm doing it by myself, I quite enjoy it, so I occasionally will break into some. Uh, Flea Platoon, does your hand ever hurt after a while? Um, this one does. Most of the time, no, uh, but this one, my thumb in particular, when I'm driving the knives, because when I'm using a knife, uh, I drive when I'm working in this direction, I'm driving the knife using this thumb here. You've got a fairly small surface area on the back of this blade, and it does actually make my thumb sore. Uh, so, um, other than that, no, because you don't hold the knives that tightly. Um, part of the ability to use a knife safely is really to be relatively relaxed holding it. So you're holding it firm, but you're not gripping it really tightly because that actually means that you've got, you lose control. I mean, you can see my handshakes if I grip it tightly. You don't want that to happen. So it's, it's, a, it's a loose movement. Still happens sometimes, you'll get cramp, but uh, no, generally speaking, other than that thumb, doesn't uh, cause any pain at all. Um, not particularly interested in um, politics on the stream, uh, Kennedy Twitch. No problem, old hat. Hopefully we'll see you again in the future, but if not, at least, thank you for dropping in. 
And in fact, I could go on for quite a while, but <laughs> um, it's now it's now ten past ten. <laughs> Not quite bedtime, but certainly past the end of stream time. Uh, you're right there, Lazar. Um, I just beat you to it. But uh, it is indeed. I would normally stop a stream uh, around about 10 o'clock. Um, the way in which you guys get me to go on a bit longer than that, of course, is to keep chatting in, in chat um, so that we have a, a conversation going. But... Um, Unfortunately, I have seen the, the time. Uh, and I do have to clear up. Uh, and what's on the desk is only half of it. The other half is down my front and on the floor. But uh, let me take my glove off. Because it catches on the wood. Mm, it's not bad tonight. Last night you could actually see a purple bruise across my thumb. It's gone today. Um, no old hat I won't unfortunately <laughs> um, hmm, that lights hmm, blinds the camera a little bit um, we're not doing too bad it, the, tonight we've reshaped one of these hips a little bit possibly once a bit more we've really taken the back down uh, a about a quarter of an inch from when we started earlier on today started to slim the cat uh, across in this sort of direction that's a it's about right now but that yeah I might do a little bit more just to give me space to carve around sort of shape here uh, into the front paws on both sides uh, and round off the hips a little bit. They're a little bit sort of pointy at the moment. Um, but we're not doing too bad. Face obviously needs more work. Or oh, I could just leave it very stylized like that at the moment. <laughs> we'll see how confident I feel. Because uh, if I do much to it, I could end up ruining it. But it's a practice. you know. If I ruin it, fine, I've learned something. okay <laughs> so um but that's it for tonight we'll just carry on with it tomorrow which is when the next stream is, will be so if there's anybody that's um watching and isn't following then i of course do encourage you to do so push the follow button uh, if you're not interested in following that's okay uh, if you just like a notification when i go live then there is twitter i tweet when i go live not when I have my breakfast. So it's at Zaragonart. The details are below the stream window in case you come back later and wonder what it was. Um, but they'll be on the end plate as well in a moment. Uh, but if you'd just like to try and catch me tomorrow, then you can do so. Which is when my next stream is 8pm UK time, 1900 hours GMT. Oh, about two and a quarter hours ago, it was 8 o'clock. Which is when I started. That time tomorrow. So, uh, if uh, if 3D block is going to uh, to stream uh, spin tires or or whatever, I highly encourage you to uh, to take a, a look. Um, if his spin tires is anything like his airbrushing, it should be entertaining. <laughs> and uh, I would just uh, like to obviously point out the Etsy shop, which is scrolling at the top of the screen there. And uh, since it's just been launched, there is a, has been a discount code uh, popping up in chat every so often. And uh, I'll just give you it once more. Oops. <laughs> I would give it once more if I actually type the right command. <laughs> so if, you, uh, if you're interested in any of the jewellery items, there's a code there valid until uh, midnight. I think it's Eastern Standard Time, but 0400 GMT uh, on Friday. Thank you all. I hope I'll see you again on a future stream.